Welcome to the iPad Podcast, a weekly podcast from Max Future. Okay, welcome to the iPad Podcast. This is Lex at Max Future, and today is Easter, April 8th, 2012, and this is podcast number 95 of the iPad Podcast. And, um, Thanks for listening, and you can support this podcast by going to the iTunes store and giving it a positive review. So this is a chit-chat-free podcast. All we do is talk about iPad news, iPad apps, and iPad-related devices. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first story that we should talk about is something that was in the Washington Post, but that actually John Gruber of Daring Fireball started, and it's getting a lot of attention. Even the Washington Post is talking about it with Bloomberg News. And it's the, the headline is, is Apple testing a 7.85-inch iPad in its lab? And basically during his talk show podcast on the 5x5 network, John Gruber talking to Dan Benjamin said that, quote, I've heard from multiple people that this is something that they're kind of noodling with. That is uh, a, a 7.85-inch iPad um, with... Um, you know, the same pixel resolution as the first iPad and the second iPad. And according to the Washington Post, it says he went on to clarify that it's unclear if this small iPad will ever hit the market. It's well known that Apple likes to test all sorts of far-fetched products in its labs, most which never get realized. Um, And it goes on to say such a device might, you know, compete with the Kindle Fire, which goes for $200. So, you know, that raises, it's a good question. Do you think that Apple is, you know, going to do a um, 7.85 inch device? Now, John Gruber pointed out, and I'll show you here, what does a 7.85 inch iPad look like? Well, John Gruber said, if you take a screenshot of a, you know, iPad 2, you know, display, and then tilt it from uh, portrait mode to uh, to landscape view. After taking the screenshot in portrait view, the the screenshot will be in portrait view across the width of the iPad. So if you're looking at the video version of this podcast, I I can show you what it looks like. And so so basically, this sort of smaller area he says would be the same size as a 7.85 inch iPad and the thing is like I'm playing around with it like I'm, I'm touching the um, the little folders and it would be a little smaller but I think it would be doable you know so I think Apple could come out with such a device now why would Apple come out with such a device now I put it to you Apple would only do so for business reasons if it felt it could make money doing so you know uh, some people say oh well Apple should do it to just make sure it retains its dominant market share of tablet devices that the iPad has in the face of devices that are cheaper, like the Kindle Fire or the e-devices, e-book devices like the Kindle e-reader and the Nook, and also the, the rumored Android tablet that Google is supposed to be coming out with this summer. But Apple is very clever and very smart as a business. Apple's all about making profits. And the way Apple makes profits is by making devices that have a profit margin of like 30 to 40%. And in in recent years, it's more like 40%. So Apple doesn't like to just give away devices that break even. Uh, That's something that Amazon does. So the question is, can Apple make a 7.85 inch tablet and still make a profit? Well, there's a couple of challenges. First of all, you know, if it makes a cheaper iPad, will that cannibalize sales of the uh, $399 iPad 2 or the entry-level iPad third generation at $500? And the question is, where would Apple price such a 7-inch iPad? And I've said this before, part of the challenge is Apple's entry-level iPod Touch is at $200. So there's not a lot of room there to play with because right now the iPad 2 uh, sells for $400 essentially and the iPod Touch sells for $200. And if you make a uh, 7.85-inch 
uh, iPad, and um, it could cannibalize not only the iPad, uh, the 11 inch or the the seven the the 10 inch iPad, but it could also cannibalize the iPod Touch, uh, which is like $200. Um, so I don't know. On the other hand, maybe it'll just capture. It'll make more sales. Maybe there's a lot of people who are not buying a tablet and uh, would still buy an iPod Touch or are not buying an iPod Touch, but would buy a tablet if it was 7.85 inches. And why would they do so? For a couple of reasons. It would be cheaper than a full-fledged tablet of 400 or 500 dollars from Apple, and it would be lighter. I think there are a lot of people who like um, the iPad but find it too heavy to read and are going to the Kindle Fire because it's lighter and more portable. So, and the, you know, the iPod Touch is too small really, you know, for the, the full gaming experience that you get with like the iPad. So, I don't know, part of me thinks that they are going to come out with this. And um, where would they price it at? My guess is that they would price it at $300 or $325. And if Apple can make it so that um, it still has a 40% profit at $325, I think that would be a very powerful device because it's going to be a much better value for people than the $200 Kindle Fire one. Apple has refined the interface for the iPad, and so the you know the touch interface is much better than the Kindle Fire, and um, the ecosystem is bigger. You have you know th this incredible app store, and you know just an incredible ecosystem supporting the iPad. So anyway, so I think this is very 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 doable and um, my guess is if such a device came out it would come out uh, either late in the year right before Christmas or with the launch of the next generation iPad next spring so we'll have to see now speaking of Google coming out with its own tablet um, TheVerge.com reports that the Google tablet, which was expected to come in May, is now going to be delayed until July due to price cu cutting efforts. And, um, and uh, apparently they're trying to get the price down. The current price, according to The Verge, is around $249, which is above the Kindle Fire. And uh, The Verge says that the tablet is, is being made in partnership with Taiwan's Asustic Computer. And it comes with a 7-inch screen, an NVIDIA Tegra 3 quad-core processor, and is Wi-Fi only. And it runs Ice, ice Cream Sandwich. And um, they're going to try to get the price down, I guess, to compete with um, the Kindle Fire. And um, so, I don't know, what do you think of... I mean, what do you think of this Google tablet? I'll, I mean, I'll tell you what the problem with Google is. Um, you know, Google, remember, tried to sell its own, like, Nexus phone, and that didn't go so well. And part of Google's problem is, you know, as a retailer, is that it has no retail support. You know, one of the things that people forget about Apple and why the iPad is just so successful is that Apple has not only this great ecosystem of apps and such, it has tremendous support. Apple has hundreds and hundreds of Apple stores around the United States and around major countries around the world where it, it you know, sells and displays the iPad. And it has, you know, the Genius Bars and all this Apple Care in the stores. So the thing is, are you... And Amazon, at least, has like some ability to deal with customers over the phone. But Google, Google has like no sorts of retail capability. You can't really call Google if you have any problem with Gmail or your blog or AdSense or anything like that to get any help. So I think what people are going to do is they, you know, some tech people. Some you know people who are in Google Plus are going to buy the Kindle tablet. I mean the Google tablet, but 
everyday people are you know are going to pony up extra money to get a, uh, an iPad or to get to get um, the Kindle Fire because at least Amazon has some capability of supporting customers and customer service. And you know if Google gets in the game of the seven inch tablet and Amazon's in the game of the seven inch tablet. I, I'm pretty sure then Apple will come out with the 7.85 inch tablet because that'll really just cut out that part of the market too. So I'm not surprised that Google's having trouble coming out with a cheap tablet, but uh, we'll have to see what happens. So how successful is the iPad? Well, according to the AP News in an article, entitled Apple's iPad is the only tablet people know. Um, the iPad has become so successful that it it is possible that it will become a generic name for tablet devices. And uh, the article goes on to say, you know, look at what happened to Kleenex. You know, Kleenex was a company and, um, and now it means a tissue. It also says look at Google. You know, people some some people view Google as not the name of a company, but to Google something. And so, you know, according to this story, the iPad is so successful; it's the only tablet most people know, and so it's going to become, you know, generic. Although some people point out that Apple will prevent anybody else from using the name iPad. So if if other companies start making tablets and trying to call it like an iPad. Apple's going to sue them. So I don't know. I mean, you know, it's possible we'll think of the iPad as the ta tablet. Um, but so what? You know, I mean, is the world going to somehow change because of that? It just means it's going to be a generic name. So it's it's an interesting article, but I don't think it has that much significance other than if you're an Apple investor, it means Apple's going to dominate tablet devices. Okay, so now let's talk apps. Um, you know, this is a big week in apps. And, um, you know, today on Easter, one of the big sports events was the Masters Golf Tournament at Augusta National. And everybody's getting into the iPad game because the Masters had their own app for free in iTunes. And um, I guess it got good ratings. But the way I found out about it was the, the former TechCrunch writer... Uh, M.G. Siegler tweeted that he was watching live TV on the iPad through of the Augusta National Tournament. And um, I did a quick look about on the Masters in the iTunes store. And sure enough, for the iPad, there's the Masters app. And it's very cool. And apparently M.G. Siegler liked it. And so basically, it's the official the official uh, tournament app, and it says, here are some of the features. Saturday and Sunday live CBS simulcast. So you'd get the live CBS feed, so you could watch it there. And you can also um, have seven additional live streams of video content. It says there are, you know, different golfing features. And what else? Interact with live leaderboard and pairings and um well as i'm recording this the masters is over bubba wilson won it uh but this is cool and i think this is a trend where you're going to see more and more you know content providers and sporting events highlighting their big event through an ipad app and i i used it i mean one thing you couldn't do is stream airplay to an apple tv uh, when I tried doing that, it said, like, you know, it didn't have rights to do it. Um, but overall, it's a really nice app. If Let me just take a, give you a look at it on the um, screencast view if you're looking at the video of this. So if you're looking at the video version of this um, iPad podcast, here's what the Masters app looks like. Um, you know, the featured video is of Bubba Wilson getting his green jacket from winning the, the, I'm sorry, Bubba Watson, not Bubba Wilson, winning the Masters. And then you've got other videos from throughout the day at the bottom of the screen. So it's a pretty cool in-depth app. I mean, if you if you watch the Masters or want to recap what happened, you can download the app. It's free. It's kind of cool. Let's see, it has pairings on the bottom. 
shows you everybody who is um, grouped the different uh, the different um, pairings. You can go back to that. There are photos. It's got really nice photos. I mean, um, you know, even if you weren't a, a big Masters fan, if you're interested in the Masters, it has the course. Shows you every hole, the 18 holes. Um, and it also shows you landmarks, I guess, on the on the ground. So it's a real, I guess, tribute to Augusta National. Uh, and then there's a timeline that shows you the history of the of the Masters going back to the 1930s. Pictures through the 30s. You can jump to the 40s, the 1950s. Wow, this is so. This is really this app is actually pretty involved. It's really a whole history of the Augusta National Golf Course. Uh, it's also got live updates and news, all news. Watson wins Masters in playoff. Um, so this is just, you know, you know, I, kudos to them because I think this is a beautiful app. Um, more sporting events should do something like this. This is really, you know, well done. Um, so, you know, it's still in the App Store. It's for free. And you should check it out. It's very easy to navigate. You can look up players. So this is kind of cool. You can look up all the players in the, um, here's somebody, Robert Garagas, and it gives you, uh, you know, how he did on each hole, gives you his background, his birth date, the country he's from, his general stats. So this is, you know, again, this is a very, very cool app, and uh, I highly recommend it, and it's free in the App Store. Okay, another free app that I'd like to highlight for everyone is something from Snap scan or actually Fujitsu. Fujitsu is a maker of, you know, I guess um, copy machines and stuff like that. But they have a great line of scanners if you want to go paperless. And um, their their line of scanners are called Snap Scan, and they work with both Windows and Mac computers. But Fujitsu did something interesting. They came out with a Snap Scan app for the iPad that's free. And while you can't take a Fujitsu scanner and plug it into an iPad, you can, um, this, this part's kind of cool. You can, with the app on a Mac or a Windows, you can, there's a mobile version. And so when you, you can have your iPad um, like nearby on the same wireless network, and if you have the scanner run and scan um, while connected to your Mac, it can go from your automatically to your iPad. So you can scan directly to your iPad for your Windows machine or from your Mac machine um, using this app. So, I mean, it sounds a little convoluted, but here's how it works. You launch the SnapScan app on your iPad and then you go to SnapScan Mobile on the SnapScan program on Windows or the Mac and it sees your iPad and then when you scan the scan goes straight to your iPad and then you can you know you can review it and stuff like that so here's what it says and it's free so if you have a Fujitsu scanner uh, for Windows or for, and hooked up to your Windows computer or your Mac, and you have an iPad, you might want to get this. It's kind of cool. Now, it would be nice if Fujitsu made it so that you could scan directly to the iPad. I don't know if they'll eventually do that. So it says here, receive and review PDF JPEG image scanned with SnapScap in a seamless manner without syncing with iTunes. Receive ready-to-use files with the various automatic correction Features set in Snap Scan Manager in a computer, page size detection, color detection, blank page removal. Receive and view images from Rack 2 Filer or Snap Scan Organizer. View images online. Link the images with other applications such as iBooks and Evernote installed on your iPad, iPhone, or iPod Touch. And use the images in mail, print, or photos on the iPad. So, um,. You know, it's pretty cool and it's free. And let's see, I guess they have 
uh, version 1.10 is out now. It says, linkage with mail from the preview screen has been added, so you can, I guess, email the, the files. Files can be deleted automatically once they are sent to another application. Um, I guess it also works on the iPhone. And the application has been verified to operate with iOS 5. So look, it's a it's a nice free utility. And if you scan a lot and you have one of these things, uh, Fujitsu Snap Scans, uh, you should get this free app. It's, it's kind of cool. Okay, so if you're a doctor, uh, there's a free app now that may help you in the medical profession. Um, it's from, I guess, an enterprise entity called Allscripts, and they have an app that's free called Allscripts Wand. And basically, you know, it allows you to see a lot of content for, that doctors use on the iPad. Here's the description. It says, when the vital components of the EHR are intuitive and accessible, the clinical experience is transformed and adoption is accelerated. Allscripts Wand is the native iPad application for enterprise and professional EHR, coupling the latest in tablet technology with the latest in user innovation for a revolutionary approach to how you practice medicine. So it basically says there's this graphical interface and it allows clinicians to add or update clinical information for a patient, vitals, allergies, history, immunization, problems, medication, review an appointment list and indicate current patient status and location, quickly access patient summary information with drill down access to details when necessary, experience a longitudinal all-in-one timeline view of patient information, lab results, capture chief complaints, e-prescribe with electronic transmission to pharmacies, and drug interaction checking for professional prescription, uh, resolve tasks and respond to messages. It says WAND is ideal for physicians who are not currently documenting in the exam room, physicians who wish to review a patient's chart prior to entering the exam room, but will have access the EHR with a docked computer in the exam room, clinical staff with intake responsibilities. And it says WAND is compatible for users of enterprise EHR version 11.2 and higher and professional EHR version 9.2.2 and higher. So you'll need to have appropriate licenses for enterprise EHR and professional EHR and WAND. And so Allscripts, I guess, makes these enterprise solutions for doctors and basically what it's saying is you can get this um, now all this data in your account on the iPad and um, it's pretty interesting let's see in the prior versions um, somebody gives it five stars and says yes for native apps Citrix only gets you so far interface wise functionality needs to be built into the ground from the ground up on the iPad. Um, one doctor wrote, one, how can you have reviews on an app that hasn't even gone live yet? All five stars, come on, looks like the company's already starting to pad their reviews. Uh, somebody writes, though, this is back in November, um, the current build of Wombat has exceeded my expectations. I'm an internist who has been beta testing Wombat since August, and we finally have enough functionality and ability to upload Wombat onto our live servers. So this is called WAND, all scripts WAND. Um, look, I'm not a doctor, but I do think this is kind of interesting that you can like prescribe medicine, see, see, um, you know, see, um, see data about your patients on the iPad. I think it's very exciting. Okay, so there are more free enterprise apps coming out. FileMaker, which is the great database company, um, has a free app called FileMaker Go 12 for iPad, which has, I guess, just come out April 4th. It was released, and, you know, it's free, and I guess you use it with other Fire FileMaker products. It's a database app, and it basically says FileMaker Go 12 lets you and your team access databases created by FileMaker Pro 12 on your iPad. You can, um, here's what you can do. You can multitask support 
when you return to your database app from other apps, FileMaker Go picks up right where you left off. Uh, improved media integration, record video or audio from your iPad and add it directly to a container field, playback media directly from Fire FileMaker Go. You can export data in multi multiple formats, export your data from FileMaker Go in several new formats, including Excel, CSV tab, or HTML files. Enhance container fields when hosting databases on FileMaker Server 12. Instantly stream movies and music from your device without any data storage limit concerns. Um, so it re requires FileMaker Pro 12 or FileMaker, 12, FileMaker Pro 12 Advance to create or modify databases. And um, it only opens FileMaker Pro 12 and FileMaker Pro 12 Advanced Databases. So it's a way to get, I guess, to access your databases, and I guess you can also send some data there. Um, it says here there are you can use one of three convenient ways to access apps on your iPad: connect to databases hosted on FileMaker Server or 12 or Pro 12 via wireless network or Wi-Fi or 3G. Copy your databases between your desktop or your laptop and FileMaker Pro using file sharing in iTunes or download databases sent via email and open in FileMaker Pro. So look if you're a big FileMaker Pro user and you get an iPad you might want to check out this free app. Uh, it essentially allows you to like to noodle around with your databases um, on the iPad. So again this is free so check it out. Okay so you know there's been a number of social discovery video apps you know that give you video from the internet and you know serendipitously show you interesting stuff by video um, squirrel was one of them well there's another one uh, that caught my eye that's free called shuffler s-h-u-f-f-l-r and you know again this is a social video discovery app it says, Shuffler is a cool social video app where videos find you. The new Shuffler Daily Fix picks the best video from your world and brings them to you every day. Don't ever miss a video. So it says, see what videos your friends are watching, celebs are sharing, trending videos, breaking news, and more. Shuffler is everywhere you wanted from social video at one place. For the latest updates, follow Shuffler on Twitter. Um, it says... 2.0 features daily fix videos from your world in one place every day slick new user interface watch the videos your friends are sharing on Facebook and Twitter see what the celebs and influencers are watching right now with our exclusive celeb channels follow your friends on Shuffler to see what they're currently watching cue videos from anywhere with the Shuffler cue bookmark catch what it's currently buzzing the social media and in this version 3.0 it says you get your here here's what's new I guess this app's been around for a while you get your personalized daily video fix presented in a new multi-touch UI concept you get the daily fix time timeline a, a window into your world of videos that went past introducing flip side the little twist in a tail where you can choose to get entertained in a variety of ways and autoplay controls for a relax so you know you might want to check this out there's a number of these free social video apps this stumble upon um, and then there's squirrel I, I like to use squirrel I haven't really played around with shuffler but I guess I will again it's free and I mean other apps sort of give you video too I mean um, flip fl flipboard um, flipboard um, yeah, Flip um, Flipboard gives you video too in some of the, um, you know, in some of the pages that it gives you if there's video in it. But I think we're going to see more and more of this. I mean, one thing that the iPad doesn't lack is video content. I mean, we're getting video in so many ways. I mean, I think last week I talked about this Arrow TV service that Barry Diller has through through browsers on the iPad and the iPhone, which gives you streaming, you know, over the air TV. Uh, and then there's just all these dedicated apps by ABC, NBC, Al Jazeera has live TV streaming. So, you know, 
I think the iPad is the Apple TV. I mean, it's so convenient. I mean, today I watched a Netflix film on the iPad. Um, do we really need a standalone TV that's the Apple TV when really the iPad and the iPhone, you know, essentially are a TV, particularly with um, AirPlay and ability to send stuff to Apple TV? Anyways, that's a digression. Check out this free Shuffler app if you want to explore some video social media stuff. Okay, so, um, you know, last week we talked about the Paper app, which is just a great app for sketching and painting and drawing. And, you know, there's just so many great apps out there for painting and drawing. And I guess there's an, another one that's been updated that is pretty good. And it's uh, $6.99. And it's on sale now, I guess. It's called Art Rage. And um, Art Rage has a lot of cool features. It sounds a, it's a little more involved than the paper app, which I guess altogether costs eight bucks if you want every, um, every tool. So here are the features of Art Rage. Um, high quality strokes respect the volume of paint on the canvas, letting you play with texture as well as color. Oil brush with thickness and smearing watercolors track tool and paper wetness as you paint airbrush um, palette knife for spreading and blending pigments paint roller and paint tube inking pen with auto smoothing and pressure simulation pencil marker pen chalk and crayon eraser flood fill settings for the fine control of each tool and custom tool present for strong favorites and also you can record your paintings and export the recording and play it back in the desktop version of ArtRage Studio or Studio Pro to recreate your art at higher resolution. And you have layers, unlimited layers, blend modes include a Photoshop standards, easy access to visibility, op opacity, um, preservation of transparency, layer uh, transformations, and it goes on and on and on. It says here you can have files up to 2048 or 2000. Four by 48 on the iPad 2 or later. Um, let's see what's new here in version 1.4.1. Um, it now supports full retina display resolution in its interface and files can be created up to 2048 by 2048. And um, what else? There's a bug fixes, um, adjusted the magnified color sample Adjusted the three-finger drag brush size indicator. Um, anyways, look, it's got a lot of features. That's the bottom line. But I'll tell you, one of the reasons I like the paper app is its simplicity. It doesn't have a lot of features, and it's a beautiful UI. Um, I think some of the comments here for for this Art Rage app said that you know there is a bit of a lag time. Somebody wrote on April 1st, lag problem limits usefulness, great potential, it says, but you can't tell what you're doing because of the lag, and I'm using an iPad 2, 64 gigabytes. Granted, the developers give you hints, shutting down iPad, killing background apps to help you when you see significant lag problems or when you get the icon that indicates you're running low on memory, but that's lazy programming. There aren't many different iPad platforms. There should have been... They should have... Uh, they should have ArtRage discover what type of iPad, iPad it's running. Um, other reviews are good. So look, I, I mean, there's just so many different apps out there. And I think if you find something that is truly responsive, like there isn't a lot of lag and the drawing is, is simple to do and easy, then stick with it. But, you know, here's just another painting and drawing app that has a lot of features and um, I haven't used it um, so I can't really tell you if it's definitely better than paper I can tell you that I am very happy with paper and its simplicity well a lot of magazines have migrated to the iPad and one of the great classics has finally arrived on the iPad and that's Mad Magazine and it sells for cheap that's that little joke because that's what they used to say on the paper version of Mad Magazine. So 
basically it's a free download um, and the free download allows you then to buy Mad Magazine inside the app. Uh, so I guess the first purchase I guess is some sort of commemorative version of Mad and it's nine dollars and ninety nine cents uh, or maybe that's for ten if you want to buy all ten. Um, so you know apparently even has the fold out um, the famous paper fold out in the book and it says here um, how purchasing works single copy back issues and future issues are available for purchase in this app at the following prices single current issue is four dollars and ninety nine cents single back issue is a dollar ninety nine uh, and it says digital issues published prior to April 2012 are static issues, unlike the ones published from April 2012 forward. And it says future issues are available through the following auto renewing subscriptions. An annual subscription of six issues is $9.99. And bi monthly subscription, one issue every two months, is $1.99 per two month period. And it says each subscription will include the current issue if you do not already own it and subsequently published future issues. Payment will be charged to your iTunes account at confirmation of purchase. And, um, you know, I mean, this is the, the trend we're seeing where magazines go to the iPad. When I was a kid, I used to, you know, aggressively buy each edition of Mad Magazine. It was kind of fun. Um, you know, to collect and to read. They were kind of witty and kind of goofy and you felt you were part of some club. So it goes into your magazine app if you download it. It's by DC Comics. Um, and, you know, if you're a Mad Magazine fan, you should get it. Okay, so the the next app I'm really, you know, excited by and um, I sort of downloaded it on a whim and it's a free app. And it's called Piano Dust Buster Song Game. And I played around with my daughter, and it's really cool, and it's actually a good way to get your child or even yourself interested in learning how to play the piano. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about the app, but this is what it says on the, on the iTunes store. Piano Dust Buster Song Game. Use your own real piano or a 3D virtual one to play your favorite songs. Dust up your piano with a music game. And so, um, well, why don't I show you? But basically, it's free. And um, I don't know if there's an in app purchase. I haven't seen it, but it gives you like some free songs. But let me just show you how this works because it it's very cool. Okay, so here's the game Dust Buster. And so it's, it's partly game and partly a way to learn how to play the piano. So there's two modes, okay? So one mode, and I'll get to the second mode, which I think is really wild uh, later, but the, the, the main mode is touch piano on the iPad itself. So uh, it's a kind of a fun game. So you go and you have two modes. You have germ attack on the left or staff master. Now germ attack um, is the simpler mode and it's sort of like like if you ever see Guitar Hero or or whatever, where you have notes coming down and you have to play them. But here, it actually um, teaches you how to play the piano. So you have two modes. It, it starts off with simpler songs and works up harder. So the simplest song is Mary's Little Lamb. And you have practice mode. So let's try practice mode. So it's lo loading it up. Now, um, it says here, germ attack. Play the correct note when the germ reaches the r rhythm line. So you watch these germs fall. It's kind of like a gross concept, germs falling on a piano. I mean, but I guess you do get germs on a piano from, like, touching it. But it'll make you peck out the song on the keyboard. So watch. Here we got... So if you see it, I'm hitting the notes as they hit the line. And it's like this little lady like sort of bashing the notes with her with a little dust buster thing.
And um, so, you know, they're constantly going down. And then your score comes up. And here I got 97% right. Number of hints shown, zero. So well done. And then you can play, um, you know, with like a live audition showtime with I guess some music company so let me let me show you another one here um, here's Jingle Bells let's do um, Jingle Bells Showtime so so watch this here we go here we go here it comes Jingle Bells Jing bells so I'm hitting it in tune in rhythm actually and there's some like synthesizer accompaniment now I'll tell you like I play the piano so this wasn't that hard for me but my young daughter I've been trying to get her interest in the piano and she has, a, and th this has actually sort of captivated her. Okay, now, what's interesting here, and I got a pretty high score here. I got 44 out of 49 notes, and unexpected notes played five, so I was a little, I was a little off. But here's what's interesting. You can go on the keyboard on the, um, on the iPad to Staff Master mode, which isn't germs falling, but rather um, how the actual um, G clef would be on a real like sight reading of the piano. So here is Frere Jaca. Uh, let's practice it. But you'll see it's going left to right. Um, I mean, right to left, like you would read notes. So, you know, here we go. So, oh, wait, wait, G. I'm getting this wrong. Uh, it's kind of hard to record and do the podcast and play at the same time. Anyways, it's Frere Jaca. So I did terrible on that version, 73 out of 5. Okay, so you get the hang of it here, which is you got these two modes. But this is where... It gets really incredible because you can go back to the settings. Now this, and I tested this out and, and I was stunned that this really worked. There's a real piano version of this. So you can prop up this, the same interface on top of your piano and play your real piano along with this sort of interaction training center. And here's the wild thing, the, the iPad hears the notes that you're playing and it stops you if you're playing the wrong note and makes you play it again and you start off by saying it says you know play an f to make sure that you you know you're ready to start and it senses the f so again i don't have a piano right here it's uh, in another room but what's stunning here is what's going on is that this game can hear you play a real piano and sync with your real piano acoustic notes through the microphone so i found i found this to be amazing um so i don't understand why this is free i don't understand who this company is and why it's free uh, let's see there's a you know i would be willing to pay for um actually here's an, a frequent uh, answer area um it's made by a company called joy tunes um, it says here currently all songs are free some songs are locked to prevent beginners from jumping to difficult levels you can open these songs by earning notes um, I don't know I don't think there's any paid songs so I'd, maybe in the future if this takes off they plan to sell additional songs but I think this is a really great way 
to get kids interested in playing the piano or even adults to like have fun learning how to play the piano. And um, it's a free app, and I think it's very cool. I would um, I would check it out. Okay, if you're looking for an educational app, one got a major upgrade on April 2nd, and it's called Brian Cox's Wonders of the Universe. And this is a great app if you want to like learn more about the universe or teach your kids about the universe. And um, here's what the description of, of it is. Take a mind-blowing 3D tour of the universe with Professor Brian Cox as your guide. The official Wonders app by arrangement with the BBC. And uh, it's $6.99. It says, journey up from the smallest particles past the moons and planets of the solar system out through the Oort cloud to the Milky Way, past our local stars and out to distant galaxies before arriving finally at the edge of the known universe. On the way, you will encounter the likes of seething red giants, beautiful nebula, pulsing neutron stars, and confront a daunting vision of a black hole sucking down a hapless star, all rendered in spectacular 3D. It says here, Brian Cox, Professor Brian Cox, provides mind-expanding insight in over 200 interactive articles pinned to the stars, planets, and galaxies, and other wonders modeled on extraordinary 3D. Um, the app also includes hundreds of infographics and images of space objects supplied by astronomy experts, NASA, and space researchers. And um, it says here you can explore the entire universe in seven interlinked scales from subatomic to the edge of the known universe or take Brian's tours, two and a half hours of BBC video from the Wonders TV series, which require Wi-Fi. And there's 50 plus spectacular 3D models of planets, moons, galaxies, nebula, and 200 interactive articles. So what's new in 1.1 is new material by Brian Cox and mute control no longer turns the video sound off. Now, you should know this, um, this, this app is pretty massive. It's 343 megabytes in size. So if you have a little iPad uh, 16 gigabyte, you might want to limit yourself. Now the reviews are kind of mixed. Um, one person on April 2nd gave it only two stars and said not even a ninth grade science class. It says the presentation is very pretty and interface is very smooth. However, I was hoping for much more depth to the information. I'm a high school science teacher and was excited that there might have been good ideas for ways to present this information, but all of the content here is pretty basic and fluffy. For instance, the section on the periodic table has a video of the narrator dropping sodium in water a picture of the periodic table and some text about how elements like to react with each other, nothing about how the table is organized or about specific elements. Uh, I think this app is for people who slept through their high school science class. So another person gave it four stars and wrote, awesome, I gave it four stars instead of five as I would love to see Professor Cox engage the reader watcher with additional content that is more sophisticated. I teach physics and astronomy to talented students at high school using a one-on-one -on -one learning program. I think the current version doesn't have enough depth to keep them fully engaged. The potential to do so is definitely there, and I encourage Professor Cox to build on this awesome beginning. Other people give it five stars. Um, so, look, I haven't bought this um, yet. Six dollars. I mean, that's my one. that's one of my concerns is that there's... You know, I would love like something to be really in depth, and um, you know, there is there are a lot of videos here and a lot of models. So the question is, is that enough? So, but if you're into astronomy and you're checking out astronomy apps, you should maybe consider looking at this. All right. So if you're interested into gossip, just trashy, trashy gossip and you're a fan of TMZ, the gossip site, I guess, who owns that now? Time, I think the Time Warner own them, or um, yeah, Warner Brothers owns them. And TMZ now has a TMZ for iPad app. It's a free app. And uh, it says here, get celebrity news first on your TMZ app for the iPad, a free customizable app that's super easy to use, the TMZ app allows you to personalize your entire TMZ experience 
Everything you love about TMZ is just a touch away, including exclusive stories, high quality videos, photo galleries. It's the TMZ you know and love, optimized for iPad OA, oh, iOS 5. So, you know, it's a straightforward sort of, you know, trashy news app by TMZ. If you're into that sort of stuff, some people are. Um, it's free and um, you might want to download it. Okay, so if you're looking to turn your iPad into a uh, MacBook Air or you really miss having, you know, a har hardcore keyboard with your iPad, there's a new, uh, you know, a new keyboard, whatever, a case for it uh, that turns it into a MacBook Pro according to ubergizmo.com, the website. It says here, a Japanese company named Makatakara J .jp has created a case for your iPad that turns it into a MacBook Pro. The case pictured above with the attached iPad is reported to have a built-in lithium poly polyam battery that allows you to charge your iPad while it is in use. It also features a USB port, port a mini USB port, and Bluetooth for the keyboard to connect to your iPad. And I guess you can purchase it via a, a Japanese retailer for about $75. And I wonder if this is going to come. But I'll tell you, here are my thoughts on this, which is I do, long time ago, maybe when the iPad first came out, I said, you know, one day we'll have these convertible MacBook Airs where um, you'll bend the screen of the MacBook Air back over the keyboard or, or somehow slide the keyboard underneath, and it'll go from, like, you know, full operating system like on a Mac to iPad operating system and I think we're eventually going to get there I think I think there's going to be a demand on the upper parts of the, the more expensive you know enterprise levels of the iPad to have it morph into a powerful computer with a keyboard and a more in-depth operating system and I think the way Apple should do it is have these morphing MacBook Airs. In other words, where when it's in iPad mode, it uses less batteries and you don't need the keyboard, but when you want it to be a full computer, you slide the keyboard out and, and the case goes vertical like a screen and you get full version of the operating system. But anyways, you know, this concept from this Japanese company maybe is sort of getting there in that you know in that concept so if you're you know if you're typing a lot on your iPad and you're traveling a lot and using it a lot um, maybe this case is for you since it has a battery built in that charges the iPad so this is on the ubergizmo.com website Okay, so that's it for episode 95 of the iPad podcast. This is Lex at MaxFuture.com. Thanks for listening. Remember, this is a chit-chat-free podcast all about the iPad, iPad apps, iPad news, and iPad devices. And you can support it by giving it any positive review on YouTube's video channel for Max Future or on Blip TV or in the iTunes store for the iPad podcast. Thanks for listening, and see you next week. This has been a Max Future Production.